Hey guys, how's it going? Hope that you had a happy New Year's Eve and a happy New Year's. This is uh, the morning of January 1st, 2017. And uh, just wanted to kind of give you some plans for what I have planned, I guess. I have a, uh, I'm still working for UPS and uh, I might work this week, I don't know. But I got a feeling that this will be the last week if I do work at all this week. And... Um, so I'm not really making any plans to really get any studies together until I know for sure that work is done. But I have started already to work on something new, and I got on the website editor for the first time in a while yesterday. I haven't even been on there for like weeks, and I changed some things. I got on the forum. I started something, a new post on there. Um... One of the things that I did was this Norman Geisler um, systematic theology book that I was talking about. It's really awesome, and I was looking through it and already learning a bunch of stuff. I was looking at, you know, the doctrine of the Trinity, and I was looking at the attributes of God. And I mentioned before how the attributes of God on Wikipedia, they said generally they're separated into two different categories. And I said that was... The categories they separate the attributes of God into are his personal attributes, and those those would be like you know love and kindness and stuff like that, and then his infinite powers, and that would be like his omnipotence and his omniscience, you know the fact that he's all powerful, all knowing, etc. Um, but when I was reading this Norman Geisler book, he, he separates them into God's moral attributes, and that would be like his love and kindness, and his metaphysical attributes, and that would be like his omnipotence, his omniscience, and you know his eternality and stuff. That makes a lot more sense to me, okay, his moral attributes and his metaphysical attributes. So I went on the website and I changed that already. Um, so, I'm already seeing a lot of good things in that systematic theology. Um, he goes into pretty good detail. He uses quotes from the quote-unquote church fathers, uh, which I might read those. I might add those into the studies and stuff. He answers objections. Uh, it's just an awesome book, I guess. Um, but, you know, as far as the church fathers, the I think it's interesting to study church history and all that. But the thing that I don't like is when people want to use that as, like, an argument for doctrines and stuff. Like, let's say, like, the doctrine of the Trinity or something. Well, like, Augustine taught it, like, so it's true, you know. Or some people will be like, well, Augustine taught it, so it's not true or whatever. You know, I don't really see that as valid arguments, you know, to support something. You know, just like using the Greek or the Hebrew, really. I don't really like that either. I just like to stick with the English King James text and work within that. But... I do think it's okay to look at what the church fathers said, they, you know, the quote-unquote church fathers. You know, they can give insight to the scripture, and, you know, sometimes they wrote some really good stuff. Uh, so, I might read some of their quotes and stuff, even if they're heretics or, you know, they taught some major false doctrines or whatever. If if it's on a certain subject and they could give more insight into that and they did a good job in that, then that's I think that's fine, you know, quoting them or whatever. So I might add that, I might not, I don't know. I might just try to find the best ones and use those. Um, let's see. And... I said I was getting a couple more books. I got those, and I talked. One was on nu numerology, numerology, number in scripture. This is by E. W. Bollinger. I think it's the same guy who did this figures in the speech, figures of speech in the Bible, uh, which is an awesome book, and that's online for free, pretty much too. So this might be as well. I don't know. I haven't even looked, but. Um, he has another one that I might get too. It's like the stars uh, in Scripture. Like the stars give witness. Like the constellations give witness to truth in Scripture and stuff. I don't know. It seems interesting. So I don't give a lot of thought to the numbers in Scripture, what people apply this stuff to. It can be interesting. You know, we do see like the number seven used a lot, and they say that's like, it represents like completeness. But, uh, you know, there's some interesting things. Uh, some Sometimes people can get off into 
wrong things on that, but the other book that I got that I forgot about was The Millennial Maze, and that talks about the Millennial Kingdom, and it has like four different views on it, kind of like the Book of Revelation, but this is specifically on the Millennial Maze. I think that probably that Book of Revelation thing is better, because it does go into the Millennial Kingdom too, but I guess uh, I got this just uh, for extra, I read that this had some good reviews, and you know, so the Bible doesn't teach, you know, a future physical literal millennial reign on the earth that's actually a false doctrine and so I'm looking more into that and anyways that's that and so my plans are as soon as work gets done or the end of next week or whatever I want to work on finishing these studies that I've said that I've wanted to finish for a while I've got like five or six of them or more there will be some pretty good long studies that we'll definitely learn stuff in and so I want to get those out and then once I get those out, I want to, then I'm going to go back over my YouTube channel and what I put on SoundCloud and everything. And I'm going to get rid of the teachings of the rapture and stuff, you know, that I think is wrong now. You know, the stuff that I taught wrongly, I'm going to get rid of that after I get some new stuff out. Uh, and then it's just open, so hopefully I'm going to start working really hard and reading all these books and start getting a whole lot out at once, I hope, this year. I want to get a lot of stuff done on the website and a lot of videos. I want to learn a lot. Uh, some big goals that I have. So, and something that I'm excited about is I just got a fine paid off that I've been paying on for over a year. I think it was like 600 bucks total, and I was only making like payments of 30 bucks a month, so it took a while. Uh, but it got down to the last hundred, and I finally I just paid it off now. So that's done, and I'm glad about that. And another exciting thing is next this month, January, is going to be the last payment that I have to make for the breath machine in my vehicle, and uh, that's like eighty bucks a month. So that's a big killer. And and then in the middle of February, I'm going to return the breath machine, hopefully. And if everything goes all right, as far as I know, I should be able to go and get my license back sometime after that, after February. So hopefully sooner than later. Uh, but, you know, I've learned from this process that everything takes more time than I want it to. So who knows? But as far as I know, everything's been done. Everything's been paid for. I've had the breath machine. I've done the time and everything else. So it should get to the point to where... I should get my license back sometime this year, hopefully sooner than later. So that's really exciting, and uh, I'm going to pay my insurance off quite ahead of time. I think it's going. I think it's like six months. I'm probably going to pay it off for. So I'm not really going to have a lot of monthly payments for a while. So that's going to be great. It's going to give me some time to look for, you know, uh, some more income. And, you know, I know in the summer I'd like to continue mowing and doing stuff like that and maybe even expand it, especially if I have my license by then, maybe go into other towns, pick up a couple other yards or something. And that can at least sustain me for, you know, the stuff that I'm doing on the Internet and everything. But uh, hopefully I'll get some kind of other part-time job or something. I want to keep working for UPS in the winter. It's such a good job uh, that I want to keep that. So I don't really want to get like a full time, like, you know, five days a week, eight hours a day job. I'd rather do something that's more flexible and uh, then do things on the side to make up for it or whatever. But we'll see. Um, anyways, it's kind of hard to just find a job around here, period, anyways. We just lost some stores at my, my the next town that's the biggest town that's close to me, it's, I mean, it's lost a, a big restaurant and lost a major store. It lost a Kmart. We used to have a Kmart and a Walmart. Now the Kmart's gone. We lost a Ponderosa. It was like a buffet, so it's like, it's going to get even harder for jobs now. But anyways, let's see. Now, I want to start the new year with this. I haven't done this for a long time, and that is the Lord's Supper. And I figured that I would do that, um... Because yesterday my mom got some of this, you know, fake champagne stuff, grape juice stuff for uh, New Year's. And I smelled it and it reminded me, like, it's like grape juice. And it, so it reminded me of t doing the Lord's Supper, you know, because the church buildings, they always use, like, grape juice. So I haven't actually partook of the Lord's Supper since I left the church buildings. And that's 
been, you know, almost, what, like a couple of years or so now. So, you know, I need to do a lot more studying on it and stuff, but I'm just going to do it kind of in the style that they would, and I figured I'm just going to record it for this new year, and maybe some of you haven't haven't partook of the Lord's Supper for a while, so maybe it's kind of a reminder, and uh, maybe you'll think about doing that in the future sometime. You know, you don't have to do it with me, like, as a video or whatever, but I guess I just got the grape juice here. And then I just ripped off a piece of, of loaf of bread. So, <laughs> nothing fancy, uh, you know. I don't think, it's not like a supernatural act like the Catholics teach where, you know, the grape juice becomes Jesus' blood and the bread actually becomes his body. It's it's symbolic. I think it's, you know, a sign of obedience. Uh, the Lord said to do this in remembrance of him. He said that to the disciples, you know, and they taught, you know, the people that they converted to do the same. Uh... So it's in memory of, of what Jesus did, and in some ways it's similar to baptism. They'd say that these are like the ordinances of the church, you know, baptism and the Lord's Supper. Um, I don't know what else to say. I'll read, I'm going to read the passage, I guess. I have a thing on the Lord's Supper that I got from that Tory's new topical textbook on the website underneath church. Um, there's not a lot to it right now, but I'll read this, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through, um, I don't know, 31 or 32, I don't know, I'll just keep going. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 though, it says, For I have received of the Lord which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night, in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye, as oft as ye drink, drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord worthily shall be guilty of the body and blood, or unworthily, whoever shall drink the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, then we, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, and we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, and ye come not, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I sit in order when I come. Will I sit in order when I come? So, a lot of interesting stuff there that needs to go into further study. But uh, one thing I noticed that, that I. Uh, he eats of the bread first and then does the drink. So I was actually going to do that in reverse. So good thing that I read this. Um, you know, it says, let a man examine himself before he drinks and, and eats. Uh, and I think that mostly that means, you know, examine that you're in the faith, you know, that you're really following Christ, um, that you've made that commitment. You know, also, you know, that you're living right for God. But I think mostly it means that, that make sure that you're in the faith. Uh, but there's some interesting stuff there. You know, it definitely needs to be examined. I think some people that might teach that you can lose salvation, they would say, you know, this is one of those passages where you can drink damnation unto yourself. You could lose your salvation or whatever. That's definitely not what it teaches. But, uh,. Let's see. Anyways, 
So this is just something that we do. I don't think there's really a set time of how often you have to do it. Uh, you know, I don't really feel bad for not having done it for the last couple of years, but, you know, I knew at some point that I need to do it again. You know, it might be better to do it, you know, at least once a year. Or some places do it once every six months. Some places do it every month. Some places do it every week, you know, the church buildings, you know, and then they get, like, dogmatic about it or whatever, but... I think that, you know, just, just do it, you know, when, when you feel led to do it, I guess. But maybe I'll start a routine of doing it at least every new year or something. That would be great, I think. Um, so, so first Jesus took the bread and he said, eat this, uh, which this is my body, which is broken for you, and do this in remembrance of me. And next, he took the cup, and he said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. This represents the blood of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, which was shed uh, for our sins, to, for our forgiveness. Jesus said that, you know, whoever, whoever, you know, eats of his flesh and drinks of his blood has eternal life. And, uh, you know, it's interesting taking the Lord's Supper and even baptism. It's like they're like personal things, you know, with just you and the Lord. And sometimes, like, it can be emotional, like the Lord's Supper. Uh, very personal experience. So, anyway. So, thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, God, for sending your Son to die on the cross uh, for our sins. Thank you for your forgiveness. And please bless this new year for all those that are watching, all the brothers and sisters of this ministry. Please bless them, Lord. I hope that they'll have a happy, healthy 2017 and get closer to you and be able to convert new people. And um, I just pray that great things will happen, uh, you know, in the kingdom of God this year, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So thank you guys. Uh, Hopefully, continue to pray for me. I'm praying for you guys. And uh, hopefully, get some really awesome studies out very soon. God bless.